Hey guys, did you know that Quant is one of the literally only crypto that is protected right now from quantum computing? If you didn't, that's what I'm going to talk about in this video right now. Quantum computing is realistically a really large fucking threat to a lot of crypto and blockchain technology and probably the next five years, definitely within the next 20 years. It's been talked about. Everyone who's developing on, on blockchain technology is a little concerned and trying to upscale everything, upgrade all their technology they have to make it so that way quantum computing cannot hack and reorganize an entire blockchain. Quants already had a schedule. They already got it done. So in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about very briefly what the threat of quantum computing really is and why it's such a big deal. And then go on a little bit about why quant is already set up for this. We know that we need it to be unhackable to the highest degree, just like you know we want for every blockchain technology. But we're looking at something that is going to be dealing with payment processing of banks across the world, government agencies across the world, and connecting all of those banks and government agencies and other blockchains together. It needs to be one of the best protected, and it's already set up for that, which almost no other crypto has really done yet. A few are only starting. So if you guys have been here before and or you get anything useful from this video, please do press the like and subscribe button down below. It means a lot to me. And let's just hop right into this video. Okay, let's go right to this whole nightmare scenario. Okay, 2019, Google Sycamore achieved quantum supremacy in just 200 seconds. Two years ago in 2023, IBM Condor hit one, 1,121 qubits, which in short, is just the first four digit quantum processor. Things are catching up. Speed is really moving. Just this year, China's, I'm going to butcher this one, uh, Zhu Zhang 3.0 solved, solved a problem in one microsecond that would have taken a supercomputer earlier this year, 2.5 billion years to solve. Now, how did they actually come up with that number? I don't know, but the point is quantum computing and the rate that they can do algorithms to break into systems is increasing at exponentially fast fucking pace. Right? Because of this, the US DHS now classifies quantum cyber attacks as a category five national threat. And NIST says that all federal systems must integrate to post quantum cryptography by 2030. That's, you want to call that four years from now, four years in two weeks, right? Translation of this, every blockchain that is using certain technology like RSA or ECDSA, which is Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, almost all altcoins are sitting duck to quantum computing. And the government believes that this threat is as real as four years from now, be able to get into all of that. So. Why does this matter to crypto? Some things most of us in crypto investors just don't realize is that 36% of Bitcoin sits in these addresses considered P2PKH, which they're directly vulnerable to Shor's algorithm, the quantum computing attack. 68% of Ethereum smart contracts still use the signature schemes that have already been shown can get hacked with quantum computing. 68% of Ethereum, right? One major quantum breakthrough and over $1.2 trillion could evaporate instantly. Right? And I'm not trying to make this sound like it's an over-exaggeration. If you haven't looked into or read a little bit about quantum computing, it really is that big of a threat for not just crypto. I mean, don't get me wrong. The, the quantum computing is a big threat for anything that has a signal. Um, I mean, we're, we can talk about we can talk about weapons of mass destruction, all the other kind of fun stuff, but. On this video today, we'll just stick it to crypto. But there's only one project that claims it's already taken the leap. I'll give that there's like another two or three that they're starting. But the technology isn't as good as good old Quant. Recently, right now, late 2025, Quant rolled out a massive upgrade to the enterprise stack integrating support for the NIST selected post-quanting algorithms. In short, Overledger got the overhaul and the anti-quantum computing was a big part of it, which I hadn't really heard too much of. I read about this while I was just going through more data, listening to G. Verdian talk about 
know, all kinds of wonderful things. And it came on to me about, that's right, they upgraded this for anti-quantum. And I've been kind of surprised how little attention, at least that I've seen, that has gotten from it. But I mean, this just helps align perfectly with Overledger and their goal of cryptography that federal systems will be required to use by 2030, right? Almost all CBDCs, uh, the roadmaps are set to start around 29 or 2030. At the same time, where governments are saying everything that's federally based, which CBDCs are, I, I know we, say that blockchain is not centralized, but centralized bank digital currencies are right there. It's going to have to be quantum protected by then. This all lines up for quant, right? More and more, it just sets it up perfectly. All the ducks are in a row saying that if you invest in quant, you're investing in the right thing for the financial future. It's one of the few that's actually set up years ahead of time to be able to not only work effectively, stop any major issues or complications like quantum cyber attacks. There is no way that a bank or a government agency is going to use a blockchain or a ledger that is not defended against this, right? I, so like HBAR, they worked on it. Ondo, XRP, Chainlink, everyone has to catch up and I'm sure they're working on it. I'm sure that they are. Quant's already done. So what are banks going to be testing? They're not going to be testing and looking at using blockchains that are one to two years behind trying to set this stuff up. They're gonna use the one that's already. And there's reasons why quant has already been used for all the CBDC testing. It's the one that's ready to be used when legislation and regulation hits. Now to get a little bit more technical, nerdy, and interesting with these banks, trials, the BIS, Fedwire rumors, Right. Things that have been confirmed. The BIS Enbridge, Bank of International Settlements, of course, project has entered new phases that are focusing on the interoperability and cross-border CBDCs. Regulators are actively exploring PQC, you know, post-quantum computing, ready rails for future tokenized finance. Again, just went over this. We know that that's what they're looking for and what they need. Reported by multiple industry watchers that Overledger has been referenced in enterprise interoperability discussions around Enbridge style pilots outside of the ones that have already become public knowledge, right? This is the Bank of International Settlements. This is the digital pound or the you know, tokenized sterling and several others that are in the works. This really helps fuel the current rumors circulating with fed wires of 2026 ISO 20022 modernization may require PQC compatible gateways. I think that they're going to. Why the hell wouldn't they? If we're running ISO 20022 to run modernization of banks, we I don't even know how this is a rumor, but I guess it's because it's unverified of everyone who's going to be running ISO compliant software saying, yes, we need post quantum computing. Quant's SATP, Proposal version two is one of the few enterprise grade frameworks that fits the specs that they're going to need. As they are creating the specs for what they're going to need in blockchain post quantum computing, they're kind of mirroring what quant has already done, right? They see that this is the technology that works. This is the one that we're going to need. So they're kind of building the standards based off of what quant has already started. That is such a big lead in front of everyone else who is looking back and saying, oh, these are the regulations where quant is, we are the regulating status. They're kind of becoming the poster child for what they have to do to set up, to do interoperability and cross-chain payments. This is why me and probably most of you guys are so hell-bent and confident that Quant is going to be running, or at least a big part of what's running the financial backbone. Now, just for fun, because there's always someone that writes out there, what about the price action? You know, Quant is an infamous stable coin. It's honestly one of the things I like about it for now because I'm confident it won't be in the future, but it being stable means a long accumulation zone. You can wait for the prices that you think you want and care about. But I can tell you, whales have been thinking these prices are great for a while. I, I did a recent video talking about the percentage of quant that's in whale wallets versus retail wallets. And wallets holding 10,000 plus quant has increased holdings by 22% this quarter, right? 
this quarter, <laughs> gone up over a fifth already in the amount of whale wallets. 428,000 quant moved to Coinbase Prime cold storage in just one transaction. Interesting. Almost all of these whale wallets only hold quant. There is no Ethereum or anything else to do with gas fees or sending it out. So it's only going to be used by certain things, right? It's not a whale investor wallet, or they would have a crap ton of Ethereum there to help move it back and forth. The only real cases it could be is staking wallets or license wallets or something else that's involving the regulation and usage of quant throughout banks. So again, when the exchange supply fails and cold storage rises, this is plain accumulation and they're doing at different prices as retail sells off the price goes down because you can see whales are not selling their quant they're just going up in numbers it's all of us the small guys we are apparently selling ours which is giving more accumulation for the big whales for when there is a supply shock not if it's a when we just watch everything fly up and that is likely going to happen with one or two large announcements involving staking, regulation, or official announcements of the future use of quant through a CBDC. So not only is quant setting up to be used to transfer and bridge pretty much every blockchain and blockchain-like technology, it's the only crypto that's set up now to protect itself from threats that could kind of wipe out the entire asset that we invest in within four or five years. They're ahead of the game. That's why I'm here investing in them. And I don't know, I like talking about it, which is why I'm doing this video. And hopefully you like hearing me ramble on about it, which is why maybe you stayed this long. Since you have stayed this long, again, reminder, those fresh buttons down there, like and subscribe are there waiting for you to click them. They're lonely. But that nonsense aside, let me down know down below, did you know about the quantum computing protection part of quant? Because I do feel like that was very much under hyped and talked about with some of the recent upgrades. And what are you looking forward to in 2026 with quant? Do you think that this is going to be the year where regulation and everything starts getting to announced and put into play? Do you think we're going to get our first real CBDC official partnership done with all this trial and testing coming up in this next year? Let me know that and anything else you want to shill about quant down below, and I'll talk to you all again soon. Peace.